uh, runbook automation systems for Prometheus and Kubernetes. And we have uh, Nathan Yellen from Robusta.dev uh, talking to us. Hi. Everyone hear me? OK, thank you. So I have some live demos planned, but the internet here is a little bit iffy. So I'm going to do my best, but uh, bear with me. And I've tried to cut them back to the minimum uh, made to make it work. OK, so a little bit about myself. So I'm Nathan, and I wear many different hats. And I guess this thing doesn't necessarily work. OK, so I'm going to stay a little bit closer. Yeah, OK, so I wear a bunch of different hats. And I was a developer for many years, also an open source contributor uh, for over 15 years now, starting with GNOME Linux. I'm co-founder of Robusta, which does Prometheus-based monitoring for Kubernetes. And I do a lot of DevRel stuff. So here's an example video I did with my grandmother, um, DevOps with Grandma Sue, where we talk about Kubernetes and explain in very non-technical terms why it matters. Um, so if you need to explain to your spouse or to other people what you do, then that's often a good reference. Now, outside of work, I'm also a crazy plant guy. So I uh, grow a lot of different vegetables, mostly tomatoes, grow a whole bunch of different stuff with my wife. And today, I'm going to be talking about runbook automation. So I'm going to be talking about what runbook automation is, why you need it and can make your life better, how it works under the hood. And assuming that the internet is OK, then you'll see live demos. And if not, then you'll see uh, screenshots. So wait, before I go on, I'm just curious. Is anyone, is anyone here using some form of runbook automation in production today? OK, so I'd love to hear from you guys afterwards. I'm also curious about what you guys do. And I also just want to see on the aspect ratio that this isn't cut off. Can you see the bottom of this? OK, yeah, so one second. Let me see if I can fix this. The aspect ratio is wrong. Is that better? OK, perfect. So who here knows this alert? Has anyone seen this before? Oh, yikes. OK, uh, yeah, I hit the button on this. Has anyone here seen this alert before? This is uh, an alert called QPod crash looping. It's part of the default set of alerts for Cube Prometheus stack, so super common alert. And the, what runbook automation is, is taking an alert like this and then adding on context. So connecting that alert to dogs, to graphs, adding on knowledge about why an alert like that is firing, and sometimes even being able to fix an alert like that automatically. Now, when we speak about context, I just want to give a non-technical example to show why context matters so much. So can anyone guess what this object is? Come on, guys. Give it a go. A security camera? What do you say? Wally. Oh, yeah? Looks a little bit like a robot, like Wally, some kind of cute robot, or something from the Terminator. OK, so to explain what this is now, I'm going to add on context. And this just shows how powerful and how important context is. So this is an object that you use when you work from home, and your cat starts jumping all over your desk. And you want to occupy your cat so that you could actually get some work done. And as soon as you see this object with the context, then it suddenly becomes apparent what this is and why it matters. But when you see another out of context, or when you see an object like this out of context, then you really don't know what it is and if it means something or not. So that's the goal of runbook automation, to add on that context. Now, I recently asked on LinkedIn what context we should gather for that that I showed you before. So I asked, I'm putting this in like terms that normal humans use now, not about context and alerts. I said, what's the first thing you do when you investigate this alert? And that's really like the same question, but phrased in the way people like actually think. And I got a whole lot of different answers. So being the data-driven guy that I am, I went and I went over all those answers and I summarized it and I counted up how many different times I got each answer. And let me go through those answers. So two people said you should blame the DevOps team. One person recommended uh, one person recommended running this command. Does anyone know what that command does? <laughs> okay, for, so for those of you who aren't in on the joke, that uninstalls Kubernetes. <laughs> but then we got a bunch of serious answers too. So 
Four people said you should run kubectl get events or look at the Kubernetes events, which are events submitted by the API server that give you useful diagnostic information. Four people said you should run kubectl describe. Kubectl describe pulls in events and some other stuff. And the overwhelming majority said that what you want to do when you have that alert is you want to look at the application logs. So you should go and fetch the pod logs, and then you know why the pod is crashing. So what we're going to do today is we're going to take that alert, and we're going to automate that process. So we're going to go, and we're going to take that alert, and automatically pull in those pod logs, and you'll get it right there in Slack. So as soon as you get that alert, you'll have the context on why that alert is firing. Now, this is a simple example, the one that we encounter every day. But you can also apply this concept to far more advanced things that we'll see later on. So let me give you a teaser for what this will look like. At the end, you're going to get an alert like that in Slack. And there, if you look carefully, you can see there at the bottom, if I know how to use this pointer thing, maybe not. But you can see there at the bottom, like the regular alert labels and everything. And essentially, we're taking the metadata from that alert, and we're taking the labels, and we're mapping it onto a Kubernetes object. And then automatically, we're pulling in all that context so the person who gets that alert doesn't get an alert and say, like, okay, here's an alert, good luck. But now you have the context, and you can see why that alert is firing. So now let's talk a little bit about Prometheus alerting architecture. So the way alerts normally work in Prometheus, and I'm sure there are people in this room who are far more experienced and expert in this than I am. So if I'm getting anything wrong here, and I'm sure I'm giving some simplifications here, then feel free to come over to me afterwards. Um, it, but what we're going to do is, sorry, the way that things normally work is Prometheus issues alerts. Those alerts get forwarded to the alert manager. And the alert manager has more advanced logic on top of that. For example, it groups the alerts. It um, has a grouping interval. It um, uh, may notice when alerts are resolved. It does various different things. Actually, the resolving happens in Prometheus, but the alert manager has some logic around that too, I believe. Um, and then finally, the alert manager takes that alert or that set of alerts if it grouped it. And now it forwards those alerts by webhook to the destination that you receive alerts in. So you get alerts at the end of the day in uh, Slack or in MS Teams or in all these different destinations. Um, someone recently added support to Robust actually for uh, Cisco WebEx. So I guess there are people getting alerts in Cisco WebEx, which kind of surprises me. Um, so you get the alerts there in Slack. And now we're going to change the architecture a little bit. And we're going to add in an additional component. So one way that you can implement runbook automation, which is very popular, that's how we're going to do it is we're going to add in an extra component here in the middle. So you have alerts that come from Prometheus. They go to Alert Manager. From Alert Manager, they get sent now, not directly to Slack or to MS Teams. They get sent to the Runbook Engine. The Runbook Engine takes that alert. It pulls an extra context, pulls in that context about what this alert is, what it means, maybe why it's happening, or even an automated fix. And then it sends that alert plus the extra context now onto the final destination. So that's what we're going to do. And this is a good time to say what Robusta is. So Robusta is an open source project um, on GitHub, of course. And it contains two main parts. So the first is the runbook engine. That's the engine that takes these incoming events and then adds on the context according to a bunch of rules that you define in YAML. And then the second part is we've gone and we're going over all the alerts in Kube Prometheus stack and all the other common alerts that people have, because we all run Kubernetes, so we actually ha all have very similar alerts to one another. And we're taking those alerts and we're adding on these runbooks out of the box so that anyone who gets alerts will just get a good alert by default without needing to configure anything. And then that leads to happier developers and people who bother you less because now they understand why an alert is firing. So that's our goal. Okay, so uh, Robusta is MIT licensed and um, please take a moment and scan that and uh, give us a star on GitHub that really helps us as a project and as an open source project, uh, helps us spread awareness also about what we do. And uh, I will also say we have a bunch of community run books that are like going out and mapping the stuff in Kube Prometheus stack and mapping out other common Prometheus errors. Um, so we're doing our best to really get wide coverage. And this is one of the reasons why it's so important to us to be here today, to really also engage with the broader Prometheus community and speak about what we're missing and what content we should add on. And let me now show you how you set this up. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go to the manager's configuration. We're going to add on the webhook receiver. We have full instructions for this online. Of course, the Prometheus docs are excellent and uh, cover this as well. And essentially, what we're telling now Prometheus, or to be precise, what we're telling Alert Manager to do is we're telling Alert Manager that when there's an alert, you shouldn't go and send it directly to Slack anymore. We're going to send that alert to the runbook engine. 
Now, the tr no, next part is like kind of the hard part, right? Now you actually have to write the runbook engine. And the runbook engine is this HTTP server. So it's getting all these alerts by HTTP over webhook. And then you have to take those alerts and you have to parse them and you have to pull out the different context about the alert. And then you have to like uh, c contact the API server and pull in the logs and do all this other stuff. So this is the traditional way you would do it. You would write a bunch of code that runs an HTTP server and has like a whole bunch of if-elses and different stuff to handle each of the different edge cases. And what we've done with Robusta is we're trying to make this really as simple as possible and to bring runbook automation to the masses. So to make that happen, we now turn this into YAML configuration. So an alert reaches Robusta. Robusta then goes and it parses this YAML file. It looks up the alert that arrived in the set of rules and it says, okay, for this given alert, how should I enrich it? What context is missing if this is an alert about crashing pods? Or if you get an alert about a node that ran out of disk space, what do I need to see as a person who's on call in order to solve that issue? And then that's where the broader community comes in and all the uh, community coverage to really out of the box, give you all the stuff that you need to succeed at alerting and to succeed at Kubernetes monitoring. So here's a configuration. I'm gonna go over the configuration now. So every automation, every runbook in Robust has three parts. There's a trigger. So that's the condition that's triggering this runbook. In this case, it's the Prometheus alert from Kube Prometheus stack that's called Kube pod crash looping. The action is what we're going to do when that arrives. And the action here is we're going to pull in the logs. And the sync is where we send the data. So we're sending the data here to Slack. You can send it to MS Teams. You can send it to, uh, like I said, Cisco WebEx. You can send it to Apps Genie, PagerDuty. You can send it all over the place. I believe you can even send it to Datadog. Um, OK, so the last part then is I just want to say a word, though, that's maybe not obvious when you look at this for the first time. But data is flowing through all of these. This is almost like a data pipeline. So if you look at this, actually, then we're saying there's an alert here on Prometheus alert when the pod crashes. But data flows from that trigger into the action. So the action now, it says go fetch the logs, but it knows who to fetch the logs for. Because we're taking the metadata from that Prometheus alert that's there from the Kubernetes Prometheus discovery. And then we're using that in order to map that alert to a Kubernetes object. And then we can pull in the logs from that Kubernetes object. So this is actually like a, this is actually like a typed pipeline. Like the data passing through this knows that this alert is related to this pod. It knows the Kubernetes uh, object. It has all the Kubernetes context. And then you can very easily pull in the right data. And of course, this is customizable. Okay, so this is the part where we all cross our fingers. And I really hope that the Wi-Fi does not fail me. Um, I always like to say, like especially when we go and we sponsor events, like never sponsor the Wi-Fi. Um, especially if you're a company that develops networking equipment, never sponsor their Wi-Fi. Um, but we see the same companies doing that again and again. Okay, so I'm gonna run this. I'm now triggering an example other, and I'm gonna jump over here to stack. I think I actually have an old, like something in there. So let's see. I just printed a bunch of stuff, so we're not gonna cheat too much. Hopefully we won't cheat at all. And okay, here we got it. And this other is still loading, I think. So in just a moment, oh, oh, okay, here we can see it. So what we got is we got a Prometheus alert, and then Robusta automatically pulled in the dogs for the pod that crashed. And we see that right there, the dogs for the crashing pod. And that's right there in the other itself. And that's this. And the thing to emphasize is this is all configurable and there are rules and we have rules out of the box to really do like the right thing for most of the common alerts. Um, so it's not just about crushing pots. That just happens to be a very popular use case. Okay, so let's go back to the slides. That's the part where I do the live demo. I wanted to do more live demos, but I was a little bit worried about the Wi-Fi, so I'm glad we got that done. And I want to speak now about three more advanced use cases. So first of all, let's generalize the concept. Now, the concept of runbook automation, it's not just about handling events that come from, from Prometheus. It's a very popular use case that we see among our, our users but it's not the only one. You could say, for example, um, we had someone say once, um, I have an ingress that's like crucial to the functioning of my cluster, and if anyone touches that ingress, I want to get notified. Or if anyone touches that ingress, go and take some operation. Um, so you can actually do something like that very easily. It's the same concept. You have a trigger, you have an action, you have a sync. So the trigger is someone modify that ingress. The action is, okay, maybe pull in some data or show me exactly like the exact diff that they modified. And then the destination is Slack or MS Teams or wherever. So um, there's an open source project called CubeWatch that's fairly popular. 
um, and there was no maintainers left that, so we took over as the official maintainers now, um, and we're the official maintainers of KubeWatch. And we use KubeWatch under the hood as part of this runbook automation engine, so you can actually track any Kubernetes change, and then you can get notified, and you can even run different automated actions when different things happen in your cluster. So this is often very useful also if you want to do this sort of thing that's not really time series based, but if you want to monitor discrete events, like you might say, I don't want to monitor the number of crash of uh, like jobs that I failed. I actually care about jobs, Kubernetes jobs. It's a, like a discrete um, event that's happening, a job failed. And then you can also do runbook automation or notifications around that sort of thing. Um, so this is very useful. And uh, we maintain KubeWatch. We're actually about to release, I think today or tomorrow, a new version of KubeWatch that fixes a bunch of bugs. The first version to come out in a very long time. So that's exciting. Um, so that's one advanced use case. And then I want to speak about two more advanced use cases. So the second one is deeper insights. So you're not limited to just pulling in data, like here are the alerts and connecting to the graphs and other stuff. You can actually apply logic, because each one of those automated actions we saw under the hood, each one of those automated actions is actually a Python function. So it's very easy to extend this to yourself. And you can actually take all the knowledge like that's in your head or in the head of the best person in the world that knows a specific application, how to monitor it, and how to maintain it. And you can take that knowledge, and you can turn that into automated code. So an example that I like to give is, like, let's say you get an alert about a problem in Elasticsearch. Um, you know the problem. You might know maybe there are slow queries in Elasticsearch. That's great. But the first thing you're going to do is you're going to go and Google it, right? Because you're not, you're, you probably aren't an Elasticsearch expert. And if you are, then the same thing will happen for MongoDB, and you'll have to go and Google it. Because there's really, we all deploy stacks nowadays that are very wide, very wide stacks, and we don't all have, like, you can't know everything. So one cool thing you can do is you can take specific issues and then take the knowledge about how to handle that issue, and one time, someone from the community who really knows that topic turns into an automated runbook, and now everyone can benefit from that. And one of the great things about Kubernetes is you have this convergence where everyone is running on Kubernetes, and many people are deploying the same Helm charts, many people are deploying the same software, and actually suddenly my errors start looking a lot like your errors. So the potential of runbook automation is the potential to really take the knowledge for how to handle errors that come up in production and to turn into automated community shared knowledge. So here's an example of that. This is something that we include out of the box. Um, if you've ever got to alerts about CPU throttling in your cluster and you want to know why you have high CPU throttling, then we have coverage out of the box, for example. Um, and we check a few different cases. We check for different known issues. We check whether the issue is uh, the Kubernetes CPU limit. If so, whether it's safe to remove it. So the potential here is the ability to really capture the understanding of why different errors occur and then to suggest solutions and even automate the fixes. So speaking about automated fixes, that's the third use case and last use case that I'll look at. So we actually support um, either complete automations or what we call human in the loop automations. So you can add rules where there will be a button in the Slack message that you get that says, OK, here's an issue that we identified. And you define in advance, like, here's the fix that I think is the proper fix. You can either run that fix completely automatically, or you can give people a button in Slack, and they just push that button. And as soon as they push that button, then it'll go and they'll run the automated runbook. So you're running the automated runbook, but you're putting a human in the loop. And you can automate that 100% as well. It really depends on your philosophy and uh, how comfortable you feel with that fix. So we have more demos and demo scenarios, like you just run kubectl apply to your cluster, and then you can see this stuff in action. Um, so we have more stuff in Git, and please also feel free to reach out and suggest stuff. And we have coverage for a bunch of stuff out of the box as well already, so like daemon set scheduled alerts, CPU overcommit, uh, kubepod not ready, different node issues, um, job failures, CPU throttling, file system no on disk space, image will back off. We have coverage for a bunch of different things, and we're constantly trying to build that out. And this is the part where I say, please send us your problems. Like, we like hearing about people's problems, and I have the issues here in this list. Either we contributed by the community, or we contributed because people came to us and they said, I have this issue in my cluster. I don't know why it's happening. And I'm busy, and I don't have time to look into it. So I'm not going to go and automate myself. So please look into this, and can you add on coverage for that? We do that all the time, and we love it. So like, please give us your issues, um, and we'll take them and investigate them and try and add on coverage. And I want to just end with one more final story. How am I doing on time? Okay. Okay, so I'll be fine then. Yeah, so I want to just end with one more story about why this matters. So 
Who here uh, likes Reddit or goes on Reddit regularly? Okay, all of us, yeah, I figured. And does anyone here know this subreddit that's called, what is this thing? Okay, so there's a subreddit that I like that's called, what is this thing? And people post a picture of something they found. They go, you know, what is this thing? And then the internet tries to tell them what that thing is. So here's a post that I saw. I think it's one of the top all-time posts. And someone said, I found this in the crawl space of a house from the 80s, my friend's house, and it was next to these boxes. And so they were hard to read with the picture, but it says radioactive material, no person shall remain within one meter of container unnecessarily. And the person who found this thought, you know, when you find a box that says radioactive material, what you do is you post it on Reddit and on what is this thing, and then you like go off and go hiking or something. So this looks really bad, right? Like this doesn't look like there's a happy ending to this story. And I want to take this as an analogy for what happens when you get a message in Slack and it's like 3 a.m. Like you get a message and there's some issue in production and it could be a really, really urgent issue. Um, and if you work in an industry like healthcare, I mean, like depending on the industry that you work in stuff, like we deal with software, but the software that we deal with has real world consequences on what people do. So moving on with the story, like this looks really bad and the advice on Reddit was like go to the hospital immediately and the person updated um, a three-man team from the state of Utah radiation control showed up at my friend's house. And that's like the people with the spacesuits, like in the movies, and they go around and they took a bunch of pro like probes and they swab stuff. And it turns out it wasn't really such a big deal. They, the team that came out found nothing but natural, like trace amounts of radon. And it turns out the former owner was just the watchmaker and they used to paint watches. So they glowed in the dark with a paint called radium. And most people know about this because like the people who painted it would lick the watches and then they all got tongue cancer. But assuming that you're not licking it and you're not actually ingesting this, this is really not a big deal. And I wanna take this now as an example back to the learning context. Like sometimes there's an issue that looks like a big, big deal, but when you add on a little bit of context, it's really not that bad. And we speak a lot about alert fatigue, right? And like not wearing people out with too many issues that look too serious and then you realize that nothing is serious and then along comes a very serious issue and you ignore it. So. The lesson of this story is not that you should ignore issues. The lesson of this story is that you want to get context as fast as possible so that if it's a serious issue, you can deal with it. And if not, then you can just relax and not be under stress. So that's the example of the power of context. And what we're out to do with Robusta and the reason that we're here and engaging this community is we want to add on as much context as possible with open source runbook automation and with the community of all the different issues so that people can sleep better at night. And when you get another in Slack, then you can have the context for what that alert means and whether it matters or not. So thank you very much for listening. And um, we wanted to do something a little bit different in our booth. So we brought the Kubernetes ship wheel. We wanted to try and bring Kubernetes into the physical world. I'm in front of a screen a lot when I'm not like outside in the garden, but we wanted to like hold Kubernetes in our hand and you can too. So please come by the booth and please say hi. And please tell us about your issues. Like we'd love to hear and we'd love to add coverage. Thank you very much.